What up, what up, America? We back. A special cooking video on our wonderful channel, CNS Food Live. Yeah. So today, I am doing something I only do a couple times a year because it's daunting. I am making gumbo. So, generally, I make gumbo in this big gangster pot right here. That's what I'm going to do today. So as I'm having a conversation with you about how you make your gumbo, of course, we're going to scale this down as much as possible. You can still make you a little pot of gumbo uh, for little or nothing. It's not the most, uh, it's not the cheapest thing. And you're not getting all these ingredients for Aldi from Aldi who is what? Not paying. Not paying me. Okay. But we did get most of them. So this is what we're going to do before I tell you about everything you need. The most important part of a gumbo is the roux. And with a roux, it is essentially flour and oil. You can use vegetable oil or you can brown butter. I use butter because I am one to accentuate flavor. You don't really have a lot of salt necessarily, so this butter will give you the salt that you need. And it is usually a half a stick of butter with about a half or a quarter of a cup of flour. In my case, I'm making a gangster pot. So I'm gonna be using quite a bit of flour because I need to thicken up a whole pot that size. Um, you can use any kind of stove you want, I mean skillet you want, but you know, when you make gumbo, sometimes you need a good old fashioned cast iron skillet. So, so this it, is what? This is the roux you're making? This is the roux. And all it is is really a thickener. Now, if you find that you don't have enough uh, liquid, like your, you don't have enough butter, you can put some more butter or you can use a little vegetable oil. You don't want to make it too oily simply because what it's going to do is it's going to be clumpy at first. And then as it cooks down, it's going to thin all the way out and then when you add all of your ingredients then it will thicken it back up weird thing i don't you know understand it <laughs> but it works i promise you it does so you see how it's clumped up like so and you got to keep mm -hmm. this moving you have to also i might need a little more you have to also keep it down on about medium because this cooks slow and low. Put a little more in there. This is a very big pot I'm gonna be using. So I'm gonna need a lot more roux um, than what you would normally use. Like I said, a stick of butter, quarter cup to half a cup of flour for you guys and then you should be fine. So this will clump up and then it'll thin out and it'll turn a chocolate brown. This whole process takes about an hour and you have to keep it moving because you don't wanna uh, burn it or scorch it and keep it on low. That way you don't have to constantly deal with it. So while this is sitting here being pretty, we're gonna come back to that. Let's have a conversation about what it takes. The most important part of the gumbo is this root. This roux, if it's not wonderful, don't scorch it. If it's not a good chocolate cover, color, then you know you just be making soup. So then we're gonna also add broth. You can buy broth in a box. You can use them little cubes if you want to. But if you want a depth of flavor, you should make your own. I'm gonna do a video on how to do each one of broth, a beef broth, a vegetable broth, a seafood broth and a chicken broth. We'll do that later. I just want to show you what my chicken broth is looking like, mm. which was already made, and my seafood broth. So I go to the fish market and get my shrimp with the heads already on them. And when you put those heads in some butter and water and bay leaves and some veggies you make a beautiful thick good stock and i use both because i'm doing a seafood and and a chicken so like when you do gumbo you can either do like a chicken and sausage you can do a seafood or you can do a combination and i do a combination 
because I only make it a couple times a year and that's what I do. Okay, there are so many different things, ways you can make gumbo. Uh, it is essentially a community soup. And so the origin is that all of the different people in the community would come together and bring what they have and put it in a pot. And they used a sassafras um, seasoning uh, to make it. There are a couple different styles of gumbo that you can make. You can make it however you want to make it. But the essential ingredients in gumbo is the Holy Trinity. When you're making your roux, after you've made your roux, you add the Holy Trinity, which are green peppers, onions, and celery. Let them marry down. You also need whatever meats you're going to use. I use some shredded chicken thighs. I use some sausage pieces. I also use crawfish tail meat. And I use the shrimp that I de-headed and de-veined to make my broth base. Now, these little human, well, these ain't human. These little <laughs> critters right here are trying to figure out what the hell finna happen to them. You know what's finna happen to them? They about to get in the gumbo. Now, we recognize and understand everybody ain't got a whole lot of money. While it sometimes in the South is unheard of, you can use an imitation crab meat that you can get from Aldi's who is not paying me. Not paying me. Uh, you can, or you can use crab legs or anything like that. It is important to use a gumbo filet, which is the sassafras plant. It's the derivative of the sassafras plant. So this is really important to use and it also thickens it still. Um, then you can use your pepper, season salt. I don't really use a whole lot. Um, rosemary and thyme are generally the more preferred ones. I use an Italian seasoning because I like all of the other basil and the other ingredients in there. Um, and I also use hot sauce and I use a Cajun seasoning. I forgot something, let me get it. You can tell I do a whole lot of cooking <laughs> because the bay leaf <laughs> is also the basis to a good gumbo um, and a bit of hot sauce and some red pepper flakes. You can season your gumbo however you want to season your gumbo. But if you want all the good flavors, again, it's a community pot. You see all this community stuff? It goes into this pot. It goes in this pot that is based in this wonderful roux that's going to take a while to make. So we'll show all of the different stages that it'll be in throughout the time because now it's thick. It'll start to thin and then it'll get darker and darker, and then we'll be able to use it. Come on, come on in here, get in there. Get in there, baby. Yeah, I'm gonna get in there. This get is, in these there. are the baby stages. Yeah, this is the yeah. baby stages of the roux. So when you come in a little bit later on, in about 20, 25 minutes, it'll look like, it'll be thinner, and it'll look like coffee, light coffee. Coffee with a whole lot of cream. And then it'll go down to like a coffee that's almost dark and then it'll be chocolate and then when it's chocolate that's kind of when you you've reached maximum flavor you don't want it to scorch you don't want it to burn you want to keep it moving um don't let it sit too long and then spread it back out it'll straighten itself right on back out so we're gonna put these here fellas back in the refrigerator because they're getting a little antsy right now and we would we wouldn't want them to come up climb out the out the container now would we we wouldn't climb out the Poor guys. container <laughs> now would we keep them over they catch a two-piece a two-piece of what they gonna be a two-piece i don't know him <laughs> they getting a little antsy though so we gonna put them back in the refrigerator let him calm on down till it's his turn it ain't gonna be his turn for a little while he trying to uh he trying to buck up right baby mm -hmm. all right Okay, as you can see, this part here is starting to thin out. I use a wooden spoon and a cast iron skillet for a couple reasons. Uh, one, it reminds me of the olden days when my mom Rose taught me how to make a roux. When she was telling me how to do it, she was now bound. So when she was telling me how to do it over the phone, I just couldn't wrap my mind around why I was sitting stir flour and uh, oil. <laughs> and when she came, to basically show me 
the importance of it and how to really, you know, spend time with it because this is, like I said, one of the most important parts of a soup, you know, of this nature, then I got to understand it. So when I use a cast iron skillet, it, of course, it, it, it uh, spreads heat a little bit better than any other skillet. But in a wooden spoon, just reminds you of, you know, remember back in the day when your mama now had a wooden fork and spoon on the wall? <laughs> and then if you got out of hand, they'd beat your ass with it. <laughs> so this reminds me of when mama now had a wooden spoon on the wall. And plus, I just, it does make so much noise and it uh, works a little bit better. Let's talk about my cup. Let's talk about my shirt. The Prince Symphonic that came to St. Louis. I'm very excited about that while we wait on this here uh, roux. And my wonderful cup that I talk about all the time, you know. In case y'all didn't know, Prince is my favorite artist in all the world. He's your favorite Since I was 12 years old, I had a poster on the wall. And ever since I was 12, he's been my future ex-baby daddy. Come on in. Right now, it's coming into a caramel color. We stir it again. You see how down on the bottom it's gotten a little darker. And that's why we're making it even because the darkness will blend in and the more we stir, you see the thinner it's getting mm -hmm. and the darker it's going to get. And so like I said, this process is a long one. So we'll just dip in and out at every point. So it's a serious balance. You have to catch that sweet spot to make it perfect, right? Kind of like a motorcycle, right, baby? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you gotta catch the sweet spot when you're driving a stick shift. You do. You gotta be paying attention to it. And it's, a, it's, it's more in the notion. And this is probably why it's such a beloved dish because you really put a lot of attention into it and a lot of affection and love and, and all of that. And I guess it reminds you of when when folks gathered around and uh, put their stuff in a pot and talked while all this was going on. Okay. Still working it. You see it? Now it's about the color of what? Dark caramel? It looks like maybe caramel. coffee with a lot of cream in it? Mm -hmm. You see how it's thinning out? And it's cooking up. So. It's getting rich, it's getting thick. The darker it gets, the more depth of flavor it's going to have. And by the time it's chocolate, it's gonna be the bomb.com. Is this chocolatey or what? Baby, do this look like chocolate? It does, it does. It looks like chocolate. So now we're right where we wanna be with it. Now we're gonna rock this holy trinity. Our green peppers, our onions. If you're just making a smaller pot, you probably want one green pepper, one onion, maybe four or five stalks of celery, two or three stalks. I would say two or three stalks of celery. But again, you can put however much you wanna put in there. If you like more celery in your food, then you go on right ahead and put some in. This will create a liquid, you know, uh, onions and celery and green peppers. They do cook down into a liquid. So we're gonna mix this in our roux. It's getting a little more pasty at this point. And that's perfectly okay. We're gonna cook this down a little bit more. And then the party is gonna start America. The party, the gumbo party, the community party, where everybody brings stuff and sticks it in a pot. Okay. Now, we're going to take our big old pot and stick it on the eye and put all this wonderful holy trinity. Come on, baby, get in there. Uh, holy Trinity and good roux into this nice big old pot because now the party's about to start. It's a party in your mouth. It's a party in your mouth. It's gonna be a party in the pot, factual. So this is now in our big old pot. Get in there. Get in there. Get in, get in there. there. Yeah, yeah. Get in there. 
and we're gonna add first just a little taste of of the chicken stock and we're gonna do that because what we want to do is break the roux up and then you won't have clumps of come on baby then you Get won't have clumps of flour and uh, butter and so we'll make sure we get all of the lumps and clumps out of there get it thinned out a little bit before we add the rest did we get it all out yep. so now it's thinned out again you probably will never use a pot this big but and you're not cooking for everybody so i'm gonna add all of my seafood stock and I'm gonna add the rest of my chicken stock. Now I want, I want you to watch the chicken stock because what you, what I do is I season the chicken stock. So all of that wonderful seasoning and excess chicken that I had in there is going in there which is going to add to our depth of flavor. Now we got this pot of soup cooking. It's time to season the water which already has seasoning in it. You want to use a couple, three bay leaves, because this is a big pot. Make sure you take the bay leaves out before serving, because these are not edible. We are going to add a little bit of seasoning salt. In your case, I would say everything is to taste when you're doing seasoning, salt and pepper and, and that sort of thing. So always start with a little bit. And then as you go along, because this soup will cook down, and so like halfway through the cooking, you might want to taste it and you may want to season it again, but just don't put a whole bunch of stuff in there to begin with. And just, you can always work your way up from the seasoning perspective. And so we have the seasoned salt, granulated garlic, uh, Italian seasoning, pepper, got some Old Bay, or you can use a non-salted Cajun seasoning. There are several on the market. Just a few red pepper, crushed red pepper, because you don't really want it spicy, unless you want it spicy. A couple of swigs of hot sauce. I'm gonna stir this before I add the filet, because, now you see how it's nice and seasoned? This is the basis for the wonderful soup that's going to season. Now, some people season their soup after they put their meats in. I season mine before because I've already seasoned my meats and I know that seafood is a, is a, a whole different seasoning in and of itself. Then you wanna add your filet. I would say in a smaller pot, you probably need about a tablespoon. In a larger pot, you probably need about a quarter cup. It is a sassafras leaf. So it's gonna bubble like this. It's gonna look kind of weird. Um, once you maneuver it and manipulate it, it'll end up melting down a lot more and it'll thicken the soup as well. I forgot about one of the other items and this is strictly optional. Now in gumbo, a lot of times, there are several different kinds, but with the one if you're using filet, you use either filet or okra. I use both and I use both because it also thickens and because my mama like okra I don't necessarily care for it but it does add a certain wonderful flavor to it that makes it delicious so I'm gonna let this hang out for a few minutes before I add any meats or anything I'm gonna bring it up to a semi boil and let it cook in and simmer in a little bit and then I'll be adding my chicken and I'll add my sausage and I'll let that simmer a little bit and then we'll do some different things with it all right, so we brought our soup up. It's hot, it's almost at a boil. I'm making certain that all of my seasonings are down there. You know what we didn't do though, baby? What we didn't do? We didn't taste it a little bit. Sometimes you got to taste it a little bit to see you know, where you are. It takes a minute to come up, but I'm excited. That's mm. very exciting. To have it at that point and that's why i taste my soup because then 
once I add all these other ingredients. If I need to add a little bit more of something, then I will. But I wanna make sure that the soup base is good. I'm, I'm a fan of seasoning everything at every point and every layer. So now I'm gonna add my sausage. You may use any type of sausage you want. You can use turkey sausage, you can use beef sausage, you can use pork sausage, you can use um, chorizo if you wanted to, but it's any kind that you really want to use. And since my husband doesn't eat pork, these are turkey polska kielbasa. And they're cut in smaller chunks. These, you can use any kind of chicken you want. These are chicken thighs, which were on sale at Aldi. Who what? Ain't paying. Ain't paying. So they still ain't paying. I use this letter. chicken actually to make my soup base, and so I by hand pulled it apart. The thing with chicken and the gumbo is that it's gonna come apart anyway the rest of the way, so it doesn't even matter. And from there, I let this go ahead and hang out, and I let this cook down for about 25 minutes, and then right at the end, I will add my seafood because after this cooks down really well, it comes up to temp and the poor little crab's gonna take a bath in this and they're gonna lose their life, America. And the seafood only takes minutes to cook and you want it kind of as fresh as possible to do. So this big old pot, I gotta add some more stuff to it and it's gonna be filled all the way, excuse me, all the way to the brim with goodness, meaty, gumbo-y goodness. So now it's been like 45 minutes, almost an hour, and all of our chicken, I told you it was going to shred out. Our chicken and our sausage is in here doing its thing. It's marinated. The flavors are off the chart. Again, this is an option if you've already used your, your filet, which is the sassafras plant. Some people in the south say either or. I say both. What you put in there right now? Because my mama likes it. This is cut okra. Oh. Back in the South, they say they're going to whip you to your rope like okra. And apparently, okra, okra has some sort of like roping uh, mechanism to it. But anyway, what it does is. Oprah has a roping it mechanism thickens. to her, too. She does. <laughs> Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> it thickens. It'll thicken the soup. And had a southern flavor that the. Southerners like so we're also because we're at the end I've tasted it I've checked the seasoning level it's really good so now we're gonna add our end spice our end meat which don't take but a moment to cook maybe 10 minutes 15 minutes you don't want to overcook it these are the shrimp that I beheaded and cleaned and then I cut them so that you can have extra shrimp bites in there because this is a big pot with a lot of people were feeding um, and I made the soup base with that. And these are crawfish tails. I love crawfish. It's my favorite thing. And this is what's left of the crabs that I cut up and cleaned. I left a little row in there, which are like eggs, you know, uh, eggs from a female, female fish because it's sweet and it has really great seasoning. So we're going to drop these homies in here. We're going to drop these homies in here. And then we're gonna drop these homies in here. And then they're gonna do a little dance. Uh, for about 15, in about 15 minutes, it should be done. This pot holds a lot of heat, and so uh, it should cook a little faster than normal because of the thickness of the pot. Sometimes when they're thin, they, they take a minute because of the coldness of the, of the seafood. And so, we got everybody in here playing, playing with each other. They're playing uh, nicely, uh, doing what they do, thickening the soup just as much. And this big old gangster pot is going to feed hopefully about 75 people. We'll see what happens because my mother makes a gumbo as well. And she makes a gumbo, a red gumbo, that's what they call it. Because it has the tomatoes in it and, and uh, pork sausage and, and other uh, 
wonderful ingredients. And so we both make a big gumbo and hopefully we have about 100, 150 people come over and we'll be done. I also already made rice. Rice is something that's very personal to people uh, on how they cook it. So maybe we'll do a video about that. It's not instant rice, but you can do instant rice, Jesus. I mean, you can. I mean, if that's what you want. So, we are about done. See, baby, come on in. Baby, come on in. Get in there. Yeah, yeah. Get in there. Don't forget to take your bay leaves out right before serving. I'm going to leave them in there until we get to where we're going. And then do it. So, I have my shrimp. I have my chicken. I have my sausage. I got some crabs bobbing up in there. And again my crawfish tails and mm. again for those who that's look like a little bit of everything except the crab and so for those who can't really afford crab and want it you are more than welcome to put an imitation crab meat uh, to give it a crab flavor because i know we all want something and we might not be able to afford to eat it it's perfectly okay now any self-respecting southerner would probably disagree but when you on a budget and you want the good stuff and you want to at least have something similar to what the good stuff is, you could go ahead and use it. All right? All right. So, we want to say thank y'all for watching. One, one more time. Get in there one more game. Get in there one more game. Get in there one more game. Get all of it. All of it. Mm. Goodness. When you, when you taste it. And when you go one big piece of crab, somebody going to be lucky. Only four lucky people <laughs> going to get a crab bite. So, we want to say thank y'all for watching. Hopefully, we've given you something that you can work with. Like, share, subscribe. Is it this button or is it this button? I'm not sure. And one day, we're going to figure it out or not. So, we want to say, oh, Prince want to say goodbye to the people. Baby, say bye to the people. Bye to the people. Thank why, you. Why did Prince get to say bye first before I do Chris ain't paying man bill up in here. I'm just saying, America, I'm a bit bitter about the fact that she's got a Prince cup and a Prince shirt. You know, next week is probably going to and, and a charm. Don't make me put the earrings on. It's probably going to be me. What? On um, the shirt and the cup. I got a shirt with you and Prince on it. Why together. Share space. <laughs> America, do y'all care about what he talking about? We y'all care about the food. I, I, but I care about what you talk about. We'll talk about it offline. I'll give you what I would give Prince if he was here. How about that? Bye, America. Say bye to the people. Bye. Bye to the people. <laughs> Thank you for watching. See you next. Bye, live. Yeah. The, 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 the fanatic. Fanatic.